Right before my wife and I got married, she had a crazy bachelorette party that might have involved things I didn't want to know about. I knew she had wild friends and that until she met me, she partied with them and had a couple run-ins with the police. As we dated and got to know each other, she told me that getting older was something she took seriously. She didn't want to continue her life on the path she was on. Instead, she wanted to settle down with a responsible man that made her feel loved and happy. I knew I could be that man for her, and I was ready to settle down too. I went out with my friends and had some good times, but it was never as reckless as my wife. I didn't see how drinking excessively, sleeping around, wasting money, or petty crime was going to lead me to a bright future. She looked at the credit card debt she racked up, saw the stark contrast to the lives we lived, and decided to change her ways. I saw her mature and make wiser choices as we spent time together, which made me believe this was the real deal. She was gorgeous, charming, genuine, and growing wiser thanks to me. I was under the impression that I'd met my soulmate and didn't need to be afraid to commit. My wife was ready to take vows with me and start our life together, so we got married in the summer of 2019. Three and a half years later, I was watching a show on my phone while she was in the bathroom. It was a normal Saturday for us. My wife was about to have a girls' night out with her friends, which was happening about four to six times a month. It was more than when we first got married. At first, she didn't allow these girls back into her life, but that's eventually what happened. They started guilt-tripping her, telling her she was going to be an old maid in her 30s. Even though she eventually gave in and started going out with them again, we had a deep bond that made me think she was a loyal, mature, respectable woman. I was completely wrong. We'd been talking about her debt, but she had trouble keeping a job. She was pretty materialistic and found it much harder to earn money than to spend it. Since I was the only one with a steady job, I paid the bills and only allowed her a bit of money to pay towards her debt, get groceries, and go out with her friends. My phone died, so I plugged it in and grabbed my wife's phone to continue watching the show. As soon as I opened it, message notifications started pouring in from men on Craigslist. I read some of them and discovered they were replying to her recent post about her needing help to pay off her credit card debt. I continued reading through messages and realized she'd been seeing someone else regularly. He told her the last night they spent together was mind-blowing, and he needed to see her again tonight. I threw the phone across the room and just laid there, processing and thinking through what I just read. I felt like I became a void that might try anything to fill the emptiness. Before my wife came out of the bathroom, I realized I needed to save screenshots of those messages to prove she was at least talking to other men like this. Since I had much better credit, I'd bought our marital house completely on my own. Now that this was happening, I feared the worst possible scenario, which included her taking my home from me. After I took two screenshots, sent them to myself, and put her phone back where it was, she entered the room and asked if I was okay. I could tell she was nervous that might have seen her phone. I said I was fine. I had to catch her meeting another man, to get evidence and help my brain accept that this was real. If it was, it was so much worse than her spending time drinking with her irresponsible friends. I arranged for my friend to pick me up and follow her that night. First, we followed her to a Starbucks, where she met an anxious-looking man that clearly didn't want anyone to know what they were up to. They got into his car without ordering anything, and we followed them into a large neighborhood. To avoid being seen, we circled around until we saw them enter a house. The curtains weren't fully shut, so from across the street, we saw them enter the living room, start making out, and drop onto the couch. I got a little closer to take pictures as my heart pounded and my hands shook. Then I crouch walked back to the car and my friend drove me home. During the ride, we discussed the disturbing reality of what was happening to me. My wife was cheating on me with multiple men for money. He started spreading rumors through his phone to our friends and through them it spread until it reached my wife's closest and dearest connections. They all bombarded her with degrading insults and slander, telling her she was cut off and they wouldn't support her terrible and degrading behavior. Even members of her family, like her twin cousins, expressed their disbelief and disappointment. She didn't even try to come home that night or ever again. The embarrassment killed her. She messaged me at 2 a.m. with a heartfelt goodbye in an attempt to get a response out of me or make me feel remorse, but it didn't work. 
I didn't reply at all, because she ultimately betrayed me. I never spoke to her again, not even in court. The last memory I have of her is when she broke down crying after receiving a lecture from the judge about honor and loyalty. OP, I am so sorry your wife proved herself to be a very inconsiderate woman. First she decided to get into trouble and debt with her friends, and then after marriage, decided to cheat on you to help pay off that debt. If she really cared or loved you, she would have considered your feelings and life consequences by her actions. A true and worthy spouse does the best they can to love and respect the love of their life however they can. When it comes to cheating, you're telling your spouse they don't hold value in your life and you would be better off without them. Except, it's worse because you aren't even directly communicating these things to them, instead you're hiding these truths and giving them a false sense of security and love. You did the right thing by exposing your wife for who she really was, obtaining proof, and following through with a divorce. No matter what they say or do, never let a cheater convince you they are worthy of your love again. I wish you the best of luck and love in life and thank you for sharing your story. Now let's get into our next story for today. At the time of this story, my wife and I were together for 10 years and had two sons under the age of 6. My wife was very close to her aging mother and made sure to include her in our family life, even though she lived in a retirement home. Once a week, we'd all go visit her and bring a collection of our son's toys for them to show her. Soon thereafter, my wife encouraged the boys to make gifts for their teachers and bus driver with grandma's help. At the same time, she started taking her mom out to sightsee and spend some one-on-one -on -one time together. The routine was she'd get the kids off the bus and then start getting ready to go out. Over time, she started seeing her mom twice a week by herself and every other Sunday with all of us. This was a lot, but even still, her mom would always say how much she missed us. I wondered how that could be if she was taking her out all the time, but I just dismissed the thought. One day, my wife had gotten the kids off the bus and came back inside, cheerful as ever. She skipped upstairs to get ready for another outing with her mom. My boy asked to watch a show, so I grabbed my wife's phone off the charger and noticed several missed calls from my son's bus driver. They were both home safe and sound, so I couldn't imagine why there would be so many missed calls from him. I tried to call him back, but found that my wife changed the lock on her phone. Instinct took over as I downloaded an app on my phone to disguise my number as my wife's. I set the call to record before I dialed his number. As soon as he answered, he said, Hi love, are you ready for the special date I promised you? I hung up as soon as I heard this. I went upstairs to find my wife as she got ready, and she looked ravishing. You could tell she was going on a special date. As soon as she saw me, she started downplaying how nice she looked and explained that her mom wanted her to take pride in her appearance, no matter what the occasion. I played the recording of the bus driver's voice, and her perfume bottle fell from her hand, smashing to pieces on the floor. She immediately became desperate, begging me to just hold on a minute and listen to her, but I still grabbed the car keys. On my way out with the boys, I insisted that she still have AP come get her and never bring her back. She was too panicked to cry, just hyperventilating and saying she would have nowhere to stay because her home was with me and the boys. I refused to give in to her. I called the bus driver again, this time on speakerphone. He answered in a weary tone. I told him I knew what was going on and he needed to come pick up my wife because she belonged to him now. He quickly told me to slow down, that he was married, and he didn't want to get involved in any drama. My wife's face fell when she realized just how bad her situation was. I just shrugged and hung up while my wife started redialing his number in vain. Just before I left, I heard her leave a voicemail, telling him he needed to come pick her up and get her a place to stay because this was all his fault. I suppose she continued calling him late into the night until she found his wife on social media and publicly begged her to tell him to call her because she needed to speak with him urgently. This obviously raised suspicions that led to her discovering the truth. My wife had been dating and sleeping with her husband, our children's bus driver, for an entire year. I had no idea it had been going on at all, let alone for so long. I felt like an idiot for failing to look into my wife's whereabouts sooner, but I truly believed she was spending time with her mom. She was, but only very rarely. AP's wife slandered my wife's name through the school and all over town. 
AP was so ashamed and willing to do whatever it took to gain his wife's forgiveness. He coasted my wife and even stopped getting on social media. He tried in vain to prove loyalty to his wife in the hopes things could go back to normal. They never did. For any of us. My wife was morally embarrassed that her lover had given her up at the first sign of trouble, and that in her attempts to get his help, she broke his family apart and made things worse for herself. I also joasted her until the visitation schedule was made and I was awarded primary custody. Her desperate affair cost her her reputation, self-confidence, and family. She isn't the same as she was, and I doubt she'll ever be. I'm thankful I'm not the one that has to figure out how to live with myself without my kids because of some stupid mistake that shouldn't have happened. AP even apologized to me, explained that when he started seeing my wife, he was in a bad place in his own marriage. He justified seeing my wife by deciding that he only needed to rely on someone emotionally. Emotional support turned into physical, and then before he knew it they were living a double life and got caught red-handed. OP, I am sorry your wife cheated on you with your son's bus driver. I can't imagine how she didn't feel extreme guilt and shame for going behind your back with someone that played a role in your children's lives. Not only that, but she used her elderly mother as a cover-up. The time she spent betraying you with this man could have been time spent improving the quality of her mother's life. After this complete disaster was revealed, it's no wonder she experienced grief and slander. It's clear that she didn't consider the potential consequences of seeing another man in the first place. What appeared at first to be her consideration for others and genuine kindness turned out to be the perfect way to hide what she was really doing. I am sorry you were put through this very real nightmare. It is never easy to recover from infidelity, but just continue to remind yourself that you and your children deserve better. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.